this is absolutely insane. I am a developer. I've been developing websites and apps for nearly 20 years now. I have my own company doing it. I live and breathe code. But today I found a new tool called Replit and this changes everything. In 2024, I think it was 2023, a tool called Devin got released and it was this kind of AI agent that would go off and build your application for you. Now we're about a year later and I think Replit is a natural progression of that where you prompt your way through building an application. So instead of writing code and then debugging it or getting AI to write chunks of code, you describe your application, it builds it, and you describe your bugs that you encounter and it asks you whether it works and various things like that. And in the end, you get a pretty good prototype built in a couple of hours, which is absolutely insane. It completely rewrites the process, the rules of how to develop applications. And I really do think it's the future particularly if you know how to code because you really get the most out of this tool. Rather than talking about it, I'm gonna show you it and really dive into why I think this is the future of building applications. And if you're not on board now, you better make sure you are because you'll be left behind. Let's just go through quickly what we're trying to recreate here. This is an app that I built a couple of years ago. It's basically a, a gratitude journal where I ask you three questions uh, every single day. And at the end of that, a month or four weeks you get asked to kind of reflect and I've added some AI into it to help you re reflect on common themes and various things like that oh and it's all encrypted and all the rest of it but ultimately it's yeah as I say a gratitude journal so if we quickly just log in here I've already got an account and you can see that I've logged a uh, daily log and these are my sort of past logs I guess just to uh, as a test account, I can edit this, um, go back through the questions and, and all the rest of it. And I can edit my account details. We've got AI and various things like that. This is what I'm gonna try and recreate. We're not gonna go through all in this episode, but ultimately we're just gonna get started on recreating this in Replit. But let's just run through the interface real quick. Obviously you can see here, I've got my code. The great thing here is that I can actually sync this to GitHub and the powerful thing about that is because I use Cursor, which is an AI powered coding environment. And it really means that I can narrow in how the files operate and things like that, which is really cool. The other thing here, and I can open these files and look into them and stuff like that. Um, you've got also got like an assistant here, which I can just chat. I mean, theoretically, you get a certain amount of credits uh, to chat with ChatGPT or Sonnet. Uh, doesn't look like they've updated to 3.7 yet, but the point is you can chat with your assistant, inspect for errors or whatever. Um, but realistically, you're just developing in this chat interface. It's even giving me good ideas here for like export functionality for journals. I didn't even think about that. That'd be great. Um, advanced analytics and insights. Really, really cool. Here we've got a console, and this is great for looking into sort of bugs that are coming up, errors and things like that. You can actually just copy and paste those in and it will try and solve those. This is obviously the Git thing here. So I've connected my GitHub and then it will just kind of sync back and forth to Git, which is just absolutely incredible. And um, we've got deployments and I can look into my databases as well. So I've got my reflections here, got my users here, which is me um, and all the rest of it, which is great. So that's the interface. So what we'll do, We'll basically delete this project. Let's just start again from fresh and see how we get on. I've actually got a paid version as well. I'll put, actually I didn't see this. I'll put this link in the description so it'll refer you. Hopefully you'll get a discount or you need more credits or something like that. Check that out. This is a slightly edited version of the prompt that I used to make the existing app. But basically, let's have a little look. A journaling app called Journaling for Clarity. And ask the user three questions a day for four weeks and on the 28th day, ask them to reflect on their month. Their diary entries should be encrypted uh, to their account, which is really important and something that um, I didn't quite get right in the final version. Of, we've still got encryption, but it's you know works in a different way. Three questions are these. Uh, the dashboard should show them all their entries for the month as well as their last four reflections. They pay a subscription, they get access to all their entries and basically a calendar system they can navigate back through the months. Um, the first page should be a marketing website. Dashboard is takes them to the app, login, all the rest of it. Let's just go. This actually took a long, long time after. Um, it probably took about 10 minutes, something like that, to build this app. But once again, it's sort of 
it's a chat. It's, it's getting me to a point where it kind of works. And right out of the box, Google login worked. Um, I would think I was able to create entries. It was just fantastic. So let's probably speed this up now and we'll talk about anything of note that comes up. Okay, so this is interesting. I remember this. Um, it's saying build the initial pro, pro, uh, prototype using Firebase and Shad DNUI. That's fine. Would you like any of these additional features? So it's sort of understood the app, what it does. And I'm going to do that. Um, custom reflection questions, probably don't want that. Enhanced encryption for entries. Mm, I don't know how that differs from normal uh, encryption, but let's have a, let's leave that and then advance. Let's give that. And now you start to see it open up as it did when I showed you the result earlier. And as I say, if you're a developer, I think this will be um, very handy if you if you already know how to develop i think you've already got a leg up on those who don't know how to develop because if as a developer you can open this code base in something like cursor and really interrogate the files what it's doing make changes edit things and and really dig in and also just to be able to articulate what you want more so as an example i'm able to look into the errors and say well it was reporting a 404 or a 500 error um i noticed in my original version of the app that the encryption key was missing. And I told it the encryption key was missing because it was logging out what the user data is. As a developer, we're kind of used to all of this kind of debugging situation. So by no means is this gonna take away developers as a, as a, as a job. I really don't think so. I think if anything, it empowers you to learn development in order to be able to build better apps. So from a foundation standpoint, absolutely learn how to code an app first. I mean, maybe this will get better in time and, and you just will not need to code, but only time will tell with that. But I seriously do think this is the, the, the correct and new way to develop an application. It's completely prompt based and you're describing your problems or features in natural language in order for the agent to do whatever it is you need to do. And then you use a developer mindset to actually debug these things. Cool. This is really important now. Um, it's asking me for my API keys. And again, if you're not a developer, this sort of stuff becomes... Um, tricky um, and it might confuse you a little bit, but I already have these saved because I've already built this app. I've already built a, I've already created a Firebase account and all the rest of it, but I don't need to create one anymore. So Firebase API key, it'll be interesting to see how, because I've got a dev uh, instance of Firebase and a production instance of Firebase. Cool. And here we go. So it's asking me now, can you try accessing the homepage and click the login or sign up buttons are visible? So yep, yeah, they look good. Now verify our Firebase authentication setup is working correctly with the provided secrets and our recent fixes to TypeScript issues. I, mean, I don't know what TypeScript issues they're talking about. Can you check if the marketing page loads and you can sign in and log into Firebase? So let's do that. So start my journey, create my account, just do this. Let's just create a password here, create account. Okay, fail create an account. Let's just double check the console here. So there's nothing in the console. So now I can say it failed to create an account. Uh, I get an error. So again, your natural language just describing what the problem is. And also something I'd suggest as well, which I should have done then, is make a list, as you're debugging, make that list of things that you're encountering because you, you'll see something and you'll forget because you're focused on, in this case, I'm focused on actually logging in. I could say and, cre and um, allow for Google, you're using less credits and you're just not letting things like slide, go under the radar or get forgotten about. So after a bit of tweaking, here's basically the app. And I want to just show you how easy it is to add a new feature. But, but we've got all of our uh, entries here. We've got our account, which we can um, sign out and all that sort of stuff. We can write today's entry, blah, 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 blah. Save it. We go back to the app and there it is. And then we can edit it. Update. So that's all working. And let's say, for example, okay, let's um, add a sign out button 
when you hover over account giving um, access to settings or log out. Let's just see if that works. So it's doing its thing. I've added a drop down menu to the account button because you check by hovering. Let's see what happens when you do this. Okay, so nothing there. Let's go to dashboard. Okay. And there you go. And go through the settings or I can sign out. So it's not on hover. I have to click, but we're getting somewhere. Let's try something else. Let's go to journaling for clarity. Let's just get this purple here. Let's try making it mostly purple as well, because you can make design updates as well. Make the dominant color of the app. Let's see if that does it. I'll update the app's primary color to that to make it the dominant color throughout the application. So you can see that it's added the CSS there, which is a pretty simple change. Probably could have added that in the file. There you go. I can already see it. Everything looks good. We'll work on a new feature. And look at that. Isn't that incredible? And I think the point that's really special about this system is that, you, as I showed you earlier, you have deployments. So you can actually set up your deployments um, and all the rest of it and actually get your app live. So it's this all-in-one solution the other where I feel like other platforms fall short, they kind of want you to code and then you've got to start the deployments and scaling yourself. This one has it all built in. So I think that's a really, really important feature that I just want to draw note to. It also looks like we've got analytics here and logs, which is amazing. Cool. And now that's deployed. So let's just check it out. So I can sign in with my Google account. Oh, so this is a new domain, uh, which I'll need to set up in Firebase. So that's that's fine. I can totally do that. But this is live now. Obviously, if you go to, I'll leave a link to the actual version that's actually live and you can subscribe to that. Uh, it's called journalingforclarity.vercel.app. But hopefully in time, this will replace that version and we can move on to a completely uh, production ready replay version of my app, Journaling for Clarity. Amazing. Even though we built a web app here, I've built uh, WordPress plugins in this. You could build native app, React native apps and things like that. It's not necessarily limited just to web apps. I think you just need to specify that in the initial prompt and you're free to kind of build a static website even. Um, really just think of the deployment and make sure you mention that in the initial prompt. Now, I don't want this to go on any longer because I just wanted to introduce you to the tool. But what I did want to quickly show you is that because of my I've linked my GitHub into this. I now have imported the original project, the Next.js project into here. And one thing I really liked about the uh, Replit version is that there was uh, encryption key that was stored per user. So every single user had uh, a different encryption key. So what I've done here, I've asked it to add a secret key to all of the users and I can go through the files here. So here's a way of generating a unique key. They've added that function there. And it's really taken into account my my project as it already stands and it's being sensitive to my coding styles. I think this takes it far and away beyond if you already have projects. So I highly recommend if you already have projects going on, importing it and having some fun. I honestly think this is really the future of development. It does not take away the need for developers. In fact, like you just saw, being able to understand how to debug issues and articulate yourself can really put yourself ahead of the pack when it comes to being able to develop the best application here. Saying that, Ripplet, there's a code down in the description to give you more credits. I think this is really a game changer when it comes to building applications. I hope you enjoy it. Like this video, subscribe if you haven't already. This channel is all about AI, building apps and things like this. Check out jubilandthedraft.com and I'll see you in the next one.